morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for having me here. I, uh, Munir has given a very strong and robust advocacy about what we need to do, and I really believe in, in life. It's very important to do things. I do believe that if ASEAN was to achieve all the prospects that have been put out there as, as we see it in the promised land, it isn't just about cajoling and extolling the virtues of that. It's about making the changes in the way we do things to get that result relatively quickly. And I have this very simple idea that I put forward to all the economic ministers, and I presented this already to them. And we call it the ASEAN Pathfinder uh, Project. If I take a very simple step at some of the ASEAN, ASEAN is all these are data that you already know. I'm going to pass this. Next slide. This one shows, again, the intra-trade that our prime minister said if we were to move the intra-trade to 40%, it would be a colossal improvement to wealth in our countries. We are at a paltry 25% uh, relative to intra-euro at 60% and, and others. Next slide, please. If you take a look at the uh, number of ASEAN companies that are more than 1 billion revenue annually, and you take ASEAN as a, as a collective, we have only 227 such companies in the whole of ASEAN. It's even less than France, less than the UK as a country. And so if you take a look at the spread, there are 64 of those companies in Singapore, 51 in Thailand, uh, 40 in Malaysia, 33 in Indonesia. So the prospects for growth is tremendous. And I think we're not really pushing our weight uh, to cause this to happen. Uh, Munir had a chart that says, let's pause and reflect. What do we do? And I had a great time to have a chat with our prime minister, and I asked him at that time, well before he took over the chairmanship, I asked him the question. Perhaps it, it's about time we need to think about posing and asking questions. What are the game changer? What are the steps that we can take to practically move the pieces forward, rather than keep hammering the same thing and get frustrated with a lack of outcome? as Munir had presented earlier. This is the, what we all know, the, uh, the utopia that has been described as the ASEAN economic blueprint, really very good single market and production-based competitive economic region, equitable economic development, and all good stuff. I went to a few sessions like this, and I went to one organized by economists uh, held in Jakarta, that was on the 26th to the 27th of uh, August, Another one held by the FT uh, Financial Times, in, also here in Singapore, that was 11 to the 12th of November. Bloomberg organized one in Bangkok. And I was a panelist, and I, I spoke like this too. And in, in all of those sessions, and I glean a summary of three big points. The first point is overwhelming view that the private sector from the private sector, the implementation is somewhat slow. That's exactly what Munir had said in the slide before. There's general frustration amongst the private sector that it is slow, it's not moving fast. The second view is that policy level solutions are good, i.e. removal of tariff barriers, but implementation is a real issue because of the non-tariff barriers. Again, we all know this. The third point, which is a little bit difficult, Different levels of country development leads to perception that some ASEAN countries are benefiting more than others. But you know, in ASEAN, we, we love to, uh, to like each other. We, we cannot confront things. So all those difficult things that are there, we don't normally like to talk about them. We just like each other, you know, we are highly collegial, but we don't confront the issues. But those are real issues. This chart, I think the iceberg, tells you the story. I would say today, policy frameworks, issues that you address in studies, are at the tip of the iceberg. You can easily tick them and say, okay, we've done them. But really, there are loads of problems in implementation. Many of you know that as you start to expand within the region, you encounter different sets of problems on the ground. But the problem here is there's a huge disconnect between what is the tip of the iceberg, what is seen, what is at the surface, but what is really down there at ground level. 
So we've got to find a way how to deal with that disconnect. So if you don't find a way how to deal with the disconnect, then you cannot move forward. And that was the early prognosis that, that we put there. Let me just give some very simple illustrative examples of some of the problems at ground level. Company A, say it's a hospital or a clinic, and it wants to expand, but the host country has too many tariff barriers. And I know real ones about how these, uh, these problems are. Company B is a hotel. The owner says, I got the money. I actually have the land in the host country, but I don't get the approval. All I want is the approval to construct it, and that's all I need. So company C is a bank. It operates in a host country, but not allowed to hire ASEAN expatriates. And this is totally contrary to the rules, as we've said, under the ASEAN uh, blueprint. Company D would like to export its goods, but have challenges with the non-tariff barrier, so cannot export. So I can go on with this list, but you can go on a list. The more you talk about it, the more frustrated you become. But then the question is, how do we move forward? I have this yin yang chart, and I honestly believe if you want to change things quickly and get big results, you must not stand in the black. You must stand in the red. You must change the doing, and you have repeatedly changed the doing, then you change the being. How many people know how to ride a bicycle here? Yeah. For those of you who don't know how to ride a bicycle, if you went to the school of cycling, and this guy teach you three years physics on the laws of motion, you do your bachelor degree, master's degree, and PhD, after you finish seven years of PhD, then he gives you the bicycle. Can you ride yes or no? Answer is no. That's not the way to do it. The way to run, learn to ride a bicycle is to take the bicycle and jump on it. Fall down a few times, you wreck her. Suddenly you figure out you know how to ride it. Don't ask that guy to explain the physics of motion. He cannot tell you, but he just knows how to do it. How do you learn to become an athlete, 100 meters, or a, 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 a marathon champion? You get to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, run for seven hours, maybe three times, a year, three times a week, practice every day for four years. Those individual activities, they may look ridiculous on their own. If you just say, what's the use of waking up in the morning? What's the use of having a special diet? But if you put the collective activities, that's how the champion become a champion. So what we need to do here today is, I think we must begin by making discrete changes in some of the actions we take to cause the changes in the being for ASEAN to flourish and become a real thing that we aspire to be. This is the model that we use in, 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 in Malaysia. We call it a BFR methodology, and this is how we run the government, uh, making changes there. Very simple, get the government people, put them in the room for a prolonged uh, period, uh, we call it a workshop, and ask them singly, ask one question. What are the key priorities? After that, then we run labs for the key priorities. Labs are very simple, put smart people in the room, throw away the key. Tell them, stay in the room full time for the six weeks or eight weeks, find solutions to the problem. I love the Ben Eagles. Eh? My favorite line in Hotel California is, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. That, that's the motto of the lab. When we finish that, then we bring the output of the lab to the public and say, this is what we intend to do. Do we think we have a good idea? If we think it's a lousy idea, tell us how can you do it differently? And then write a roadmap exactly about the promises that you said you will do in detail. Huh? Why is it important to be in detail? Because you then cause the government to be totally pregnant. You know, when you're pregnant, you're fully pregnant, there's only one consequence, you have to deliver. You can't keep the baby there beyond nine months. You must deliver. So the idea of detailing your promises to the public is causing you to be very, very uncomfortable because you've got no choice. You've got to do it. Then you have to assign KPI to ministers. In our case, they all have key performance indicators. Every Friday at 5 o'clock, they will have a re re result for that week. What they haven't done for the week is mark red, and it's mark green if they, don't, uh, if they, they deliver it. It's mark yellow if they don't deliver it. And then we have our implementation. Every month, we have steering committee meeting to solve it. 
Every six months, things that cannot be resolved at the ministerial level must be escalated to the Prime Minister. We call it Putrajaya Inquisition. In fact, we had one yesterday. At the session, we call it Putrajaya Inquisition. Anyone who is blocking a particular idea, if the project is supposed to move in a particular ministry, if someone is blocking it, we need to know who is that person, name the person, and the person must be summoned to the Inquisition to defend why he or she is not doing it. Usually, ladies and gentlemen, 70% of the problem is resolved before the meeting. No, no, nobody wants to go to those sessions. Then we ran, we have, a, we have an, an audit for, to validate the results once a year. Uh, we have an international panel that do it, and we have PWC that audit and validate the results. And finally, we, we, we do an annual report. So we put our report to the public. So in Malaysia, if you come to the Pamandu website, you will see the scores of all the ministers. Their photograph is there. Uh, they are very nice photograph, clear as well. The name's there. And so uh, all this, the actual score is there, where they're 71%, 82%. The list of things that they've achieved against the promises is written down. What they haven't achieved is also written down. What they have partially achieved is also written down. And there's no place to hide. If you do this eight-step process, then you change the being. You cause it to happen. That is the simple approach that we take. No rocket science. This is exactly what you guys do in the private sector. I come from the private sector. I work in Shell for 23 years. We do many of this there. And, 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 and that's what we do in government today. And so we had 500 people uh, from the private sector that were in our labs for our economic transformation program. So when we wanted to change our oil, gas, and industry, we had all the players in the room. We have Shell people, we had Exxon, we had Mobile, everybody in the room. We just told them, in these next six to eight weeks, what do we do here? How do we move the oil and gas to a, a, a level that is a performance is much higher than what we have today? I'm not going to go through those details. I'm just talking about the methodology. So if you take a look at the results, before we started this work, private sector growth, CAGA, was 5.5% in the preceding years before the economic transformation program. It's grown over the last four years by more than 2.5 times, 13.9%. These are realized. These are not promises. These are actuals. So you can actually make things happen. And uh, next chart. Uh, Miti is here, the boss, the lady here, very robust and formidable lady, boss for Miti, and Maida reports to her. Every single year for the last four years, we have, have re achieved record approved private sector investment plan projects. So these are not yet realized in the pipeline, so it really looks good. And it's because we, we did that approach. How can we do the same thing in ASEAN? Very simple idea, and I think, uh, if we were to, uh, to think about moving this forward, next please. I suggest that if we were to do this, we take, as Munir suggested earlier on, my suggestion is that we take 10 companies within each ASEAN countries. So 10 from Singapore, 10 from Malaysia, 10 from uh, Myanmar, 10 from Indonesia, Philippines, etc., And that will give you 100 Pathfinder companies. So we will then gather them. These are companies who are already planning to desirous of expanding within ASEAN, and they have intention to do it, and we put them together. Next slide, please. And uh, we suggest, this is a suggestion. You can do it the way you want to. I'm, I'm, I'm OK with it. I suggest that out of the 10 for each country, three are big players, four are medium-sized companies, three are small-sized companies, so that we are representing the, the whole universe. And it would be better to have companies that have proven track record, have clear ASEAN uh, expansion strategy, sound financial, has capacity and resources to move forward. They've already started some work to move it forward. So I think this is a useful thing to do. Next slide, please. The way that I suggest that we do this is that uh, if we know those 100 companies that are intending to do it, we put them for an onboarding workshop, which is, uh, we, we teach them for one week. They all come to Kuala Lumpur for onboarding. We tell them how to do it, what are the techniques of the methodologies that we are going to do it. And this on, onboarding exercise includes relevant agencies in the governments, all the ASEAN uh, countries. Then we'll spend about nine to 10 weeks in the originating companies doing all sorts of identifying 
companies and issues, etc., problems that are there in situ. Once we've done that, then we have four weeks uh, or in the originating, uh, again, companies doing syndication work to get sign-ons. So these are all preparatory work, one, two, and three. In fact, if you like, if you can give me the names of the 10, the 100 companies, you don't need to do one, two, and three. You can go straight to the, to the doing. Eh? The doing is the face-to-face -face with relevant agencies. We will need four weeks to do this, three to four weeks to do it. We will then rotate between the various countries. We go to Jakarta, we go to, Indonesia, uh, to, uh, to Malaysia, Singapore, to meet with the government agencies. So if you are the bank, we will have face-to-face -face meeting with every single one of them. We identify the real problems that is faced by the company, and then we will get the agencies to sit there across the table and find solution. Now, this is a trick. Next slide, please, and I hope it's the one. Actually, I do not want us to do a if you like, no, no, I want to the bypass. We do not want a bypass. Because it's very easy to deal with solving the problem of the 100 companies and still the process remains the same. That is called a bypass. We don't want a bypass. We want a pathfinder. That means the companies there, when you go through it, you don't just approve that company and then keep the processes as they are, but you attack the processes and make changes to the processes. So it's opened the path for other companies who want to follow the path to follow it expeditiously, expeditiously. This is the idea. That is why we call it a pathfinder. A lot of people have said, it is we don't need this pathfinder project. You just give me the 100, you know, we go there and get the approval straight away. You know, but that's not the point. That's not sustainable. Because you remember, we are about changing the being for ASEAN. The idea for the 100 companies is to open the path so that others can follow that. Then that is the speedy green land that we intend to do. And so we do not want a bypass, we want a pathfinder. That is, I do now, I hope I've made it quite simple. I don't want you to tell you more about the method of doing it, but you have to trust me that we've done it for five years and eight months now. So we've done a lot of this stuff. We, we work in to cause this to happen. And if we sit down with uh, the various guys, and really when you got to start to do this, one of the best things we'll discover today is this. In the process of going through country by country, we will find out amongst ourselves which country has the best practice for doing a particular thing. And then that is how you begin to adopt those best practices. If Singapore has a better way of doing it, Malaysians, we will say, why don't we follow that? If Indonesia has a better way of doing it for a particular thing, then it becomes transparent, clear to us, why don't you do it like this? That's how we change. If we don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's why I do not believe it takes a long time to make the changes. It is quite easy to do it if you are able to identify the best practices in reality. And the countries that has the best practice within ASEAN, we will share our practices and how it's being done. So I'm very convinced, ladies and gentlemen, if the private sector, if you want to do it, and uh, my team and I are prepared to work with you to cause this to happen. And I know when you make changes, not everybody likes to want these changes. There are people that feel threatened by it. I always believe that leadership in transformation is about disappointing people at the rate that they'll permit you to. Because nobody wants change. Nobody wants transformation. They'll tell you they want it, but when you do it, they will actually don't want it. But the worst thing is what, when they tell you and not violently they agree with you, and actually behind the scene is when they disagree. That's the worst one, the passive resistance. And I do want to have and ask you what's your take on it. You have with you a consensus. It's a very simple tool. And so uh, the question is, uh, I can't really see it. Do we agree that we need to do this Pathfinder project? If you press one, that means you strongly agree. If you press two, you agree. If you press three, you disagree. If you press four, you strongly disagree. OK, ladies and gentlemen, you can press now. OK? I hope the technology works in Singapore. It used to work in Kota Baru. OK. Right. Strongly agree 68. Uh, voters, and uh, 51 agree, there's one 
disagree, one strongly disagree. You are a minority. This is democracy. Next question. Who do you think should fund this initiative? Private sector or government? If you think the private sector should fund it, you put one. If you think government should fund it, you put two. If you think both, then you put three. You can vote now. Okay. Both. Very good. You see, uh, my team always tell me, it is we put the cost a little later. Lah. We don't tell them the cost. You put the cost, they don't want to vote. And so I actually put it the other way around. They always bully me. So the cost for doing this, by the way, for the large companies, we think it's fair for the large company to, uh, to bear the cost more than the other medium-sized and small company. We think the small company shouldn't pay. The cost is really about the facilitators. You have to fly them to the locations. You have to put them in the hotel. We have to rent the building for people to bring the civil servants into the room. There is no money involved in making profit. Uh, let me make it clear. Not one cent is made from doing this work. This is purely to reimburse the actual cost of people doing this. So, and if you, I guess you put it early before 50-50, I hope 50-50. When I made this presentation to all the economic ministers, they all voted 100% agree with the Pathfinder project. This, all the economic ministers within ASEAN, all 10 of them said yes. And to this question, they also agree with you, 50-50. That they pay some of the cost and you guys pay. And I think this is our suggestion how to, we might do this. Next slide, please. What's next? I think the next is uh, we want the government to appoint country facilitators. This is what I left them with before. By the 5th of June, they got to tell me the name of who are the facilitators in each country. Then we will need to begin the old bonding workshop for the country facilitators on the 16th of June. We need the trade Ministry of Trade and Commerce to engage with the selected companies, 1st of June. When I spoke to Munir the last time around, I said, look, this is a great opportunity for you to step up. Why don't we outsource this activity to you guys? You, as the advisory council, give me us the 10, the 100 rather. Give us the 100, and see if you can help us to come with the 100. You know, then I think in a way that we, we in the government will have very little excuse because we will have all the excuses saying that the private sector are not interested. You know, so we will have all these excuses that we can tell ourselves, maybe the excuses because we didn't have a way to get everybody together in the room. So I would like you, if you really believe this is a good thing to do, uh, really now work with, uh, with the council to identify those, those 100 companies, and we will do it. And so I did not have the opportunity to uh, to engage the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the prime ministers at the last summit, and I wanted to, unfortunately, I did not have 20 minutes to, uh, to address them, and otherwise he would have been, been able to get a firm view. But I think the fact of the matter is this. They've, the economic ministers have agreed. We're now going to process to, to get the 100 companies to come forward to do it, to do the Pathfinder. If you guys work with us to do it, nothing we can cause this to happen. That's all I, I have, and I, we left some little sheets there, and I always believe in action. Now that you have voted anonymously, I want you to vote now and put it down by name in the company, because we now want to collect this, and then we pass to the secretariat, and we, together with secretariat, will then approach those of you who want to do it. And so, if you can put that, that becomes a good start here. So, because I always believe in doing, uh, we can talk and talk, but I mean, we could start doing. So, if you fill that form, you've already voted anonymously, but now if you fill that form, together with Secretary, we can approach you and then we find a way how to get this. By the way, remember, this is a pathfinder. Even if your, your company want to do it and you're not selected, someone else is doing it, hopefully when they go through the path, they open the door for everybody. So, if, if it works, if we want to do another Pathfinder Wave 2, we can always do another 100, so we can spread it. And so this is a starting point. I always believe Martin Luther King says, faith is about knowing the first step and yet not knowing the full staircase. Thank you.